we're going to do today is put together one of these. Uh, this is the uh, Hobby King Easy Fly ST330. And um, here's the box it's in. So we'll get this put together. I haven't seen any build videos on YouTube, so I figured I might as well do one. Here's the manual, sort of. It's got a lot of little pictures in there. And stabilizer, one wing, all wrapped up. You've seen many of these online, I'm sure. Here's the other wing. There's the fuselage and the vertical stabilizer rudder. Then we have a couple of extra little pieces here. And it looks like a replacement horn and the uh, the Y adapter removed. Interesting. This um, the wing attach. It's very interesting. Well, notice the motor is assembled. The prop is on. ESC uh, servos. One here. One there. Oh, not connected. That's what this is. Okay. So that goes to the other servo. You can see in there. I wonder where the battery goes. I guess it can sit in one of these. We'll figure that out. And the folding prop. Okay, here we are at the uh, tail end of this thing. There's a thin wire here. It's probably for one of the control surfaces. A little skid area here. Plastic with, oh, that's interesting. I guess we're going to be fishing another cable up there. Here's the wing attach uh, mechanism. Apparently the wings plug into this very thin aluminum tube and I guess that's strong enough if you don't really fly too badly or hit anything when you land and we have uh, vents for cooling and up front uh, vents for cooling as well for electronics there's the folding prop and um, let's see we have one of the servos here is the ESC right here and a second servo. So we'll figure out what the, those servos do. Uh, here's the plug to the battery. And um, okay, onward. So if you look at the uh, Easy Fly Ready to Fly product manual, gives all the specs there and as I showed you earlier there's the assembly pictures uh, so I guess I'll follow those and uh, go ahead and see how this thing goes together here's the rudder it looks like a hinge here is uh, this very thin wire I guess that activates thing. Yeah, there it goes. So the servo pushes this wire and uh, the rudder does its thing. And it's this plastic piece probably fits down into here. So uh, by and large, 
Oh, look, there's a connect point. Okay. So that's where a screw goes that keeps all this connected. Okay, according to the uh, directions, what we're going to do is take this very thin wire, which is the, essentially the push rod for the uh, rudder. We're going to snake it through this little channel right here. This is a little, tiny little hole, but we'll do that. It's like threading a needle. Okay. And just push that in there. It's going. No problem. I'm thinking as the channel gets this all the way over, I hear it moving. Okay. I'm just going to, oh yeah, there it is. I'm going to see if it comes through, and it does. And uh, there it is right there. I'll just move that around. You can see that it really is in there. Okay. And I'm thinking that guy is going to head to this servo right there. It doesn't say to, but um, I think we're going to snip this tie so that that little area is going to be free to slip here. See how that's going to go? Now, here's the control horn. You want to make sure that's at the bottom because it looks like there's the, right here is the push rod or wire for the elevator. Now the other interesting thing is uh, they don't tell you is before you put that in you might want to assemble this because there's a little hole there and that is probably it looks like where that little wire is going to go through. So I just sh uh, saved you if you looked at this video um, some aggravation of pulling this whole thing out again which is no big deal. comes right out. And then, what we're going to do is first put it in here. There we go. And then, slide all this like that. There we go. And that's what that looks like. And then we can put that cable through. And again, no problem, goes right in. It's probably good to do it a couple of times anyway, get any crud that's in the way out so that it slides more easily. And there you have what eventually is going to be the tail feathers mounted. Like these pieces fit like that. And um, we'll get to that part next. So obviously this is looking like it probably goes together pretty quickly. And uh, I don't see anything to glue. So there we have it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is join these two. Looks like there's a little slot there. And it just snaps right in. That's pretty cool. And right here is that little hole for the screw that assembles the whole thing firmly. So that wasn't bad at all. Tail feathers. Okay, now what we'll do is uh, get that little screw right there. That, one's, that one goes right here. Okay, so put that in there. And screw it down. And again, what's very important with it, when you do any of these things is uh, you don't tighten everything as if you're putting the lugs on a, on a car because you will strip and break stuff. 
So there you go. Tail feathers attached. Okay, what you see here is one of the wings. Um, there we go. That, uh, let's see if we can see that right there. It's got some goo on it. So that slides into the uh, the wing support that's on the fuselage. Uh, there's a servo in there, and it's connected to the uh, control horn on the servo or the lever arm. And here's that infamous thin wire cable. It goes all the way back to this very interesting. It's like a little lever arrangement, which moves the aileron. It's interesting. So we'll see. Uh, some people have actually replaced that whole deal and put the servo here. But I like to start off with the stock, stock uh, situation. That's glued in there. So this is interesting. It looks like this lever uh, moves side to side, causing the aileron to go up and down. Very interesting. And here's the, the wing. The rest of it is the aileron all the way to the wing tip, which is flared upward. A little winglet. So this is the wire adapter they give you uh, for the connection to the ailerons on the wings. And the wings themselves don't have very long leads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add an extension to this. So if I wish to take the wings on and off, it's going to be very easy to make the aileron connections uh, because that uh, wire is going to go, cable goes in here and out into this compartment, into this cockpit area. So here's the extension. I'm going to pull it through. And there it is. Now I'll put the supplied wire adapter. Make sure the polarities are correct. Black to black. Plug it in, and there we go. Okay, lots of room. Now at the end of the wing, where all this goop is right now, it's for some lubrication, I would imagine, there's a um, sort of a, well, a fitting that looks like uh, interior to this here. There's a sort of a bulbous and a channel behind this bulbous area. And I believe what's supposed to happen is when this slides onto the tube, inside this mechanism, you can just see them right here on this side, there's a, a screw here and another one here. And from the bottom, once the wing is attached, what you do is you screw those things down. And I think the idea is that um, that screw here is supposed to engage that ridge and not uh, actually be a very uh, uh, sturdy attach point so the wing can't pull out. I'm not too happy with that, <laughs> just looking at this. But, um, you know, I'm going to go with it and uh, probably not use these screws. I've seen uh, this looks a little bit thin here. And uh, the other problem I think you would have, if you tighten it up and deform that little fitting, it's going to be really hard to get that back out of the tube. So I might use uh, magnets or Velcro or something like that to keep the wings attached. Or just fly gently, as I enjoy doing. Okay, what you see now is the, uh, the way the wings are going to go in there. We've got plenty of room to pull stuff through, you know. It's nice, and then sort of bring them together. This thing is big. Everything 
things should just... It's not going anywhere. That's it. This is a big plane. <laughs> it's really a big plane. We'll go from the tail feathers to the nose. So as I said when we began, this is uh, the plug and play version. So here are all my uh, connectors. Now of course notice there's plenty of room uh, with the cables that they give you. But if you take the wings on and off, it would be a pain to fish things back and forth. But you, it's your choice. Here's the ESC, the rudder and the elevator connectors. So here are your three connectors for control surfaces, right here. And uh, now let's take a look at, uh, well, <laughs> at this point, uh, good luck putting things where you'd like them. Uh, there's still a receiver that has to go in there and a battery. And uh, you get to play around with this and determine the best place to put things. So let's see, um, here I have... A 2.2 <laughs> 3-cell, maybe that can go up here. I have no idea about weight and balance. And then I inadvertently bought a 2-cell. That looks like that would slip right in there. So still more stuff to figure out. And uh, But there's plenty of room if you cut foam away. But I really like to start off with the stock configuration. And of course, let's see, I guess we can stick a receiver down there. Oh, here's a receiver. I can go down there. And again, maybe you have to remove some foam. You put the receiver in there, you could slide the antenna in the back. And uh, so this is the fun part. So if you're thinking of getting this plane you have to consider these uh, little interesting problems. Well, I hope this was helpful. This is really a big plane. But, um, you know, if you're a beginner and you want to buy this thing, um, and like with any of these planes, they're very inexpensive uh, compared to... Uh, some of the uh, other manufacturers, but they're probably all made in the same place. And the more expensive you pay, uh, you don't have these little problems usually with things missing, and you know, where do you put uh, batteries and such? Uh, and if you've never done this before, it could be very daunting. So, um, but if you're getting into the, uh, this hobby uh, and you want to do it as cheaply as possible, it's a way to go, and you learn a lot, because you'll probably crash it several times, so you learn how to put things back together. I can tell you that from experience. And that's fine. That's part of the deal. This was helpful, and uh, I'll see if I can come up with some other things. Uh, I'll get this flying at some point, and you can see that happen, too. So, thanks for watching.